Our text from this morning comes from 1 John, not the gospel according to John, 1 John, 5th chapter, verses 14 through 15. 1 John, 5th chapter, verses 14 through 15. And this is the boldness we have, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have obtained the request made of him. Now let's flip back to the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 10b. The gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verse 10b. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's word. I read from the New Revised Bible. New Revised Version Bible. I always tell you I need your prayers, but I really need you to pray for me this morning, with me, as this message will be offered. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted. My rock and my redeemer. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. Preach, Holy Spirit, because from the pulpit to the pews, to those watching virtually, we are in need of a word from you. It is in your name we pray. Amen. The sermon title for today is Living into the Power of Prayer. Living into the Power of Prayer. Now, I just need to be honest this morning. I struggle with prayer, or should I say I struggle with unanswered prayer, please. And I know without a doubt, not just because I'm clergy, but since I was eight years old, I knew about a relationship with Christ that tied me to God. I knew about that. And about two weeks ago, I told God that I wasn't going to struggle anymore. I lied. And God knew I was lying in my heart. And I asked for forgiveness. The struggle based upon wants and needs, being consistent with the divine's will. I know all of the components of prayer, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, and surrender. The struggle with me is surrender. Do you struggle with surrender? That being surrendering to the guidance and peace of God during difficult times. Do you struggle with living into the power of prayer? 
I'm being transparent because I do. When I believe, when I go through all of the components, and yes, asking in the name of Jesus, because what does 1 John 5 says? We have a boldness that we can ask anything, and God hears us. And I never forget to say in the name of Jesus. But my wants and needs don't appear to be consistent with the divine's will. God's will because there are times when I pray and I pray and I pray and I pray some more. But the desired request doesn't have the response I want from God. I've told you repeatedly, I am an impatient person. It's not something I am proud of. And I pray to God that I would be patient. And people used to say, you better not pray for patience. I pray for it because I struggle with it so. I have prayed for loved ones to be healed. I have prayed for justice to take hold in places where injustices are rampant. I have prayed and prayed and prayed. I have said, God, am I praying wrong? Tell me. Tell me how to pray. This past Wednesday, with our Lenten luncheon, every Wednesday during this season, I said, God, I will be repenting and reflecting upon what I need to do to be a better person. Not just better clergy and pastor, but a better person. And what came to me was, God, teach me how to pray according to your will. Teach me how to pray according to your will. Teach me. Let me hear. Direct me. It's not always what I want, want. I need to pray according to your will, God. So let us internalize that Christian prayer is active identification with the divine. The divine's will. It's the lifting up of our will to God's desires and God's plan. Not just for our lives, for the world. It's not the persuasion of God's will to fulfill our desires. Let me say that again. Pastor Shows Ross, it's not the persuasion of God's will to fulfill my desires. Prayer doesn't restrict God's will, but it releases it and perfects it. God will not ignore and will hear us. This is what I'm struggling with because since God hears our prayers, what's going on? God will not deny but will grant requests. Well, so why do you or I develop a disconnect with prayer? that being God's will and our desires. Because above all, we forget there that prayer is based upon well-developed trust. And this trust brings Jesus' peace to us no matter what we're going through. Let's go back to the first John 5, 14, and 15 texts. And this is the bonus we have, that if we ask anything according to his will, 
God will hear us. And if we know that God hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have obtained the request made of him. This is dealing with the author's teaching. The author of 1 John is teaching that this piece is about a relationship with God through the risen Christ. But if we flip back to that gospel according to Matthew, your will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the struggle I have. Why aren't certain things according to your will, God? I need them. People need them. But the Matthew 6, 10 B text, that's the surrender piece in God. And I can tell you that, yes, we can ask anything. Because prayer is just communica communication and talking to God. And God hears us. But we have to be mindful that we have to accept God's will. Often I refer to Dr. Larry Dorsey, a medical doctor and author of the New York Times bestseller, Healing Words, in the book, Prayer is Good Medicine. And he uses the quote as illustrated in the prayer of the unknown Confederate soldier. It says, I ask God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn to obey. I asked for health that I might do great things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. It goes on, but the part of the soldier's prayer that always gets to me when I reflect upon it is this. I received nothing I asked for, but everything that I had hoped for. Not my will, but thy will be done. Surrendering to God to see us through. This may sound crazy, but sometimes I just force myself to thank God. Thank God for the problems I'm going through. Because usually we are praying to God because of a problem like the Confederate soldier. But in thanking God, I ask, what am I to learn? What are the lessons here? Is it to trust and depend upon you more? Is it to develop patience, God? Is it to surrender to your will, God? So you may ask, or you may be thinking, am I telling you that God's will, God's plan, is to have you or me to hurt when our desires are not responded to? No, I'm not saying that. I am saying to trust God. That's when we say, thy will be done. Trust God during the journey. And that's what I have learned. I have been struggling and all this week. I, I shared with Nelson to pray for me because I was struggling. I said, why did the Holy Spirit give me these two texts? It is about the journey. It's not mainly about the asking the request or God offering you the request. It's about the in-between stuff, the journey. Psalm 112, 7 tells us, they do not fear bad news. They confidently trust 
the Lord to care for them. It's about the journey in between. How will we react to the problems? How will we react to the pain? How will we react to the disappointments? Will we keep on trusting God as we walk through? There's an old hymn. We used to sing a lot. I, I didn't understand it in New Orleans, Louisiana. And those, my colleagues who are feminists and womanists, I wouldn't change the words around. It's, it uses a lot of he's. And, but listen to this. God moves in a mysterious way. God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take. The clouds ye so much dread are big with mercy and shall break with a blessing on your head. Judge not, judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him in his grace. Behind a frowning providence, he hides a smiling face. So how do we live into the power of prayer? How do we live into it? Believe and trust? Trust a plan that is bigger than your desires. Ask God to show you what lessons you are to learn. And remember, it's a journey. Stop looking at it as just getting your request, but look at it as a journey that God is your shepherd walking with you will offer you peace. How can we forget Jesus in Gethsemane when he asked his creator to remove the cup? He knew he was about to go to the cross, to the cross, but he said, what? Nevertheless, Jesus was on the cross, and he tells God, why have you forsaken me? But then he said, in to your hands I commend my spirit. Trust. The nevertheless peace, trust. We all know and remember our wonderful Gabby Corbett. When Gabby was eight or nine, she came to me and she said, Pastor Sheila, I want to get baptized. And before I could ask her why she wanted to get baptized, she said, because I believe upon Jesus, the risen Christ, coming from an eight or nine-year-old. And I can say it because that's how I was. Gabby asked for permission. She came to me and I said, well, Gabby, you know you have to be 13. Why? Why? I said, Gabby, because that's the rules of First Baptist Church. Pastor Sheila, don't you think that's a silly rule? Yes. Being known to break rules, I went to the diaconate at that time. And it went on and on and on. We go back and forth. But then something happened. Our beautiful, gifted Gabby died. Never being baptized outwardly, but her soul was saved inwardly because she had confessed and professed Christ. But she showed us I already knew, but she showed us 
how we don't have to just depend upon rules. It's about the journey. And sometimes the journey changes through the process. I think about the number of times I applied to churches to become a senior pastor and the number of times I was denied. I went to God and I said, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not putting together a packet anymore just to be denied. But as I prayed and prayed and prayed for God to see me through on the journey, I was called to First Baptist Church. Out of the pain of losing Gabby, we had something positive to happen. Out of the pain of being rejected, I was called to First Baptist. Am I saying God did those things? It was Gabby's health. With me, it was rejection of people not wanting a female or a black female. But, and, and some people say, you know, people take this out of context, but those who love the Lord, all things work together for good. I'm not saying that the journey is easy. What lessons am I to learn, God? Am I to lean and depend upon you more? Am I to trust you while you're on the journey, living into the power of prayer? That's what you should be asking God. If your requests are not being manifested, what am I to learn, God? Help me to trust you more, God. When my father died in 2000, My sister and I wanted someone to sing his favorite song. Oh, gospel hymn, I won't complain. I begged people in his church to sing it. I didn't want to sing it because I didn't know how I would hold up. Nobody wanted to sing it. My sister, with tears in her eyes, said, Baby girl, would you please do it? The song is, I won't complain. When we talk to God, don't let it be about complaining. Let it be about, God, what am I supposed to take from this journey? And I remember... We had flown down from Durham, North Carolina to New Orleans, Louisiana. I was exhausted. Nobody would sing the song. And then, he wasn't the first gentleman then, but Nelson Ross took me by the hand and we fell on our, our knees and he prayed. He said, God, give my wife strength. And she sings her daddy's favorite song. For me, I was crying, but I found out it was about trust. I won't complain. I've had some good days. I've had some heat. I've had some weary days and some lonely nights. Oh, but when I look around and I feel 
complain. Keep playing, Dr. Gold. I just say, thank you, Lord. I'm not saying that you can't say, God, I'm hurting. But don't complain because when you complain, you become bitter. It's about the journey. Ask God to help you through the journey. That's what thy will be done means on earth as it is in heaven. It's about the journey. How will you come out on the other side of the journey? Will you be trusting God? Having faith in God? Angry with God or what? Please have peace in God because that's how you get through the journey. So no matter when you get to the other side, if the prayers weren't answered, you have peace. If the prayers didn't turn out the way you wanted, you feel God's guidance and love and presence on the journey. And that's where I am right now. I'm telling you, yesterday it came to me. I'm not struggling anymore, Jesus, with you. What I will do my acts. What am I to learn from this? How can I help others with what I'm going through when I get on the other side? Because God's been good to all of us, no matter what we are going through right now or will go through. So let's not complain, but let us be on the journey in peace with God. Let's go to God in prayer now. God, we thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you look beyond our faults and give us the needs and desires of our heart. Forgive us for our sins because we fall short of the mark. We love you. We glorify you. We thank you for all that you have done and will do for us. Those in the sanctuary right now, bless. Those who are watching, bless. Those who are going through some difficult times right now, bless. And when they feel that their prayers may not be answered, let them remember your will be done. Not a will to hurt us, but a will to trust you. No matter what we go through, we love you, God. We ask that you bless all of our leaders in the world, in the country, in the state, with our local government. We thank you, God. We thank you for your love. And now, God, I'm asking those who have left God, and you need to do a recommitment right now. Do it. All you have to do is say, God, I trust you. If it's a recommitment, if you've been angry with God because you felt that God wasn't answering or had not answered your prayers, recommit at this time. And Jesus is so wonderful, so faithful, so loving that he will forgive because his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He came to earth to forgive us. He went back to heaven to advocate on behalf of us. So now, please commit. And remember, yes, we can ask anything in God's name. Yes, we can when we are in relationship and God hears. But nevertheless, remember. Remember to ask God to help you to live into his will, his will as we live into the power of prayer. Amen.